Welcome back everyone, I'm glad you're here. There's no doubt that we live in a world that's becoming more and more digital. A lot of times we have ebooks or we have web pages and such, and there's all different ways that we can capture information from those digital resources. But we also still live in a physical world, a world where we have books and we have documents, we, have, uh, we go to a class where there's a whiteboard, we attend a presentation where there's PowerPoint slides that we want to capture or take notes on. And the, the act of actually getting that information into our digital productivity systems can sometimes be a little bit friction filled. It can be a little bit difficult. There's little, you know, we either have to take notes by hand and anything we can do to reduce that friction is going to be a good thing. Well, that's what I'm going to talk about today. A good thing. I'm going to talk about an app that's available for free on your iPhone and Android devices called Microsoft Lens. And Microsoft Office Lens is one of those tools that I absolutely use every day. I use it as part of my productivity teaching and studying systems. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I do that. So watch the whole video because there's a lot of little tips along the way that I think will make your physical to digital systems go a lot smoother. Uh, it's an easy to use program, but I'm going to demonstrate all of the features so that you can see just how powerful of a tool it is and then you can install it and begin becoming more productive yourself. When you first launch Microsoft Lens, you'll notice it brings up the camera. So in this case, I, I just put a piece of uh, blue construction paper here just for the sake of this video so that you don't see my messy desk. Now, when I'm working, I, I really like to use the whiteboard feature. You can see down below it says whiteboard. If I'm either attending a presentation or if I'm teaching, I'll often do diagrams in order to, to talk about a different point. And as soon as I finish the diagram and I want to move on and erase the board, uh, all the students are pulling out their phones and frantically taking pictures. Well, I also pull out my phone and take a picture. And then what I'll do is I'll include that diagram that I did either in my lecture notes or I'll include it in a class notebook. Those are different ways that you can share any diagrams that you might be doing. So super handy. Let's go have a look at that. Here I've set up a little bit of a whiteboard here and you'll notice that it frames it. Even though I'm at an angle, it's going to flatten that out for me. So I take a picture and you can see that it flattens out the whiteboard and now I have that captured. I can add to it so I could put a little notation on there. So for example, I've got ideas for hikes here and then that becomes part of this diagram which I can share out with students. I'll uh, just put that in there, put it down below so it doesn't interfere with what's written on the board. And then I can go in, I can uh, choose more actions here. I can choose to add text, I can ink on it, and do all sorts of things. I can then go in and I can share this out to the OneDrive. I'm now going to share this out to OneDrive so that it's a so that's the whiteboard feature and it's really very useful. You can see that it, it crops out the whiteboard and it, it's very, very useful. Now I can do more than that. Down below here, if I just scroll over, you'll notice that I can also uh, do a document. So let's say for example, I have a magazine. So here's latest issue of National Geographic. And for whatever reason, I have the physical copy of this, or maybe I'm looking through journals, or maybe I have a paper document and I want to take a copy of this. So I'll just open up to a, a random page here. Let's grab a, actually I saw a cool page there. So I can grab a, a page in here. I want to grab something with some text on it. So there we go. So let's say this document is something I'm quite interested in. The, the Mars Rover here. I can just go in and notice it'll automatically frame the portion of the document that it thinks that I'm interested in. So I'm going to go ahead and capture that. So I've just captured it and I can use these little edges in order to capture the portion of the document I want. I'll confirm that and it'll go in and it'll now have this nice copy of the document here. If I go to a page that has all text, so look at this document and let's say I want to add this text to it. So again, I want to add this column of text. I'll add that in there. Once again, I have my guidelines here. I can go in and, and modify that. So I can go in and I can, I can continue to add different elements to my capture. So I'm capturing those elements of the National Geographic that I want. And then when I'm done, I'll just hit the done button and I can convert this. I can either save it to my photo library. I can convert it into a PDF, share it out to a OneNote uh, notebook, put it onto my OneDrive where I can also share it out create a Word document with it embedded in there, and even bring it out to a PowerPoint. You can also use Outlook, send it through the mail in the, in the iPhone. 
It also even allows me to do an immersive reader if it's text-based information. It will actually convert that into text and it can read it out loud to me. The immersive reader can be quite useful as well. If you're in the document, and I'll just open up to a random page on this in this book here, I'll just take a picture of that page. So let's just take a picture of the page. And once I've taken a picture of the page, I'll just say confirm and it'll flatten out that page. And what I can do is I'll say done, go into the immersive reader and it'll read that page to me. It just takes a second to process it, to make it into text. And here we go. How do they conduct class? 133 even tentative conclusions. So there's an example of using uh, tools such as accessibility tools uh, within the office lens. It's really great for that as well. And there's other apps you can use as well. I won't go through them all, but one of the things that you may wish to do is first of all, put a name on here. So I'm just going to put a simple name on here. I'll call it Nat Geo and we'll call it 03 2021 and we'll go ahead and say we're done. And then I can say, let's go ahead. This case, we'll put it onto my OneDrive folder and it's going to upload that into OneDrive. So now I've uploaded that into OneDrive. Another very cool thing that I can do is something called actions. Now actions are one of my absolute favorite ways of capturing information because it comes with optical character recognition. So once again, let's say I'm reading a, a book. I love using my Kindle. I love using electronic books, but not every book I have is electronic. Trust me, I have a lot of books and I still want to be able to take notes. So I'll often have Microsoft Lens open with me while I'm taking notes. So before I read a book, I'll just pop in here and I'll actually usually take this particular item and I'll go ahead and I will say this here is a document. So I'll take the picture of the book. So now I've got the picture of the book and I'll go ahead and I'll just, it'll straighten it out. So it makes it nice. So now I have that book. I'll throw that into my OneDrive and we'll just call that I already have it there, but you can see I've got it there. So it's exported up there and then I'll go to my actions and let's say there are sections of the book. I'm reading through the book and I'm like, oh, you know what? I really want to capture this element here, these action steps. So I'll just come in here and I'll go in and say, capture the action steps. It'll grab that whole page and I just really want the action steps. That's what I'm taking a note on here. So I'm just going to again use my guidelines here and I'm just going to drag this out. So it's just covering that portion of the text that I'm actually interested in taking a note on. And then what it's going to allow me to do is it's going to use optical character recognition to convert that text into actual text. And there may be a little bit of cleaning up that you need to do, but I can then copy that text. So I've copied it. And then I can use whatever productivity tool I want. So let's say in my case, OmniFocus, and I can say your note on book. Obviously I'd be more detailed here. And then I can just paste that directly into there. And I've now captured that information and I can act upon it. A lot of people I know like to use Notion. So a lot of people, you can capture it and you can put it into Notion here. So I can go into, let's say this is a notes that I'm taking on this particular book. Again, I can go in, it's sitting in my, in my um, buffer, so I can just go and paste it in there. So you can put it into any of the productivity apps that you want for, for further follow-up. So the actions are very, very useful. A really neat feature as well is if I go to the table capture for one of my actions, if I go in, you'll see that I have a table here. So let's go ahead and begin by taking a photo of the table or capturing the table. And then I'll just take a portion of this table. So let's just take just a portion of this table. We don't need the whole thing for what I'm doing. Well, all I'm doing is demonstrating, but if I just wanted to take a portion for teaching or I just want to take a portion for my notes, I can go in and just adjust these guidelines a little bit. And we'll just make sure that I've got this here. There we go. So we'll adjust the guidelines just a little bit. We'll confirm that and it'll actually extract the data from this table. Now, in this case here, I, I kind of clipped that bottom row. So I'm going to close that and we'll actually capture it again. We'll just go ahead and capture just the portion I want maybe. So we'll grab this here and we'll go ahead and just grab the portion of the table I want. And if there are mistakes in there, you do have a chance to go in and edit them. But if you clip a row, it's in my case, I just find it easier to sometimes just recapture but because uh, it'll see all of the numerical values in here. Make sure I'm not clipping a row. Just give it a little bit of a look there. Hit confirm. 
and there we have extracted data. Yeah, there are a few things that I will have to take a look at here. For example, this is 0.7, not, not dot seven. There's a few little things to clean up in here, but you can go through and you can clean up, make sure that everything's good. A lot of these are just fine and just have to go into them and I have to ignore them because they are correct. So you can go in and clean it all up. And then I can copy this, right? There's 17 items that need review. I'm not gonna review them now, I could later, but I'll go ahead and copy them. And then once again, I'll just pop into Notion. This, this one page in Notion is getting a lot of work today. So I'm gonna go in here and we'll just tap and paste. And you can see, there's my table, all there in Notion. With, these are actually numeric, val numeric values. You can see that it is showing them as numeric values. So that's a very handy feature. I really like that feature of Lens. And then I can go in and when I'm done, I'll just discard the table because I've already copied it out. I can also go in and grab a business card. I don't have a business card here. And you can do a typical photo as well. If you want to take a photo of the book, you can grab that. Thanks for watching. If that was useful, here's some other videos you can watch. As always, like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'd be really interested to know how you plan to use Microsoft Office Lens or how you have been using Microsoft Office Lens in order to be more digitally productive.